you know, we talk about the CBA, right? So the collected and bargaining agreement and uh, in the NBA, um, they have percentages of revenue shared for the players, right? right. So Jersey yeah. sales, obviously their TV contracts. So you see these every year, these contracts get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, massive. But, but that's because their CBA, it negotiates where the, you know, if the owners are making certain types of money, they get that as well. Got it. In the WNBA, that's not the case. Oh, wow. Mm. So in 2025, that's our new, you know, op opportunity to renegotiate or opt out. Um, so there are definitely future opportunities coming. But I will say that um, it's one of those things that we, we are not asking to get paid what the men get paid. We're asking to get paid the same percentage of revenue shared. OK, Do you know uh, what I'm got saying? It, got so, it. So, that's so like that's the stuff we're talking sure, about. Sure, you know sure. what I'm okay. saying? So I think that obviously we're we're young. We're we're only like, what, okay. 25 years in yeah. into yeah. the league. The NBA is at 100. So where we're at 25, we're way past where the NBA was. Right. Got it. We don't forget that, though. We compare it to now to where the NBA is now. Now what Kelsey Plum is saying here is wrong, but there seems to be a bit of progress that is being made, and that is something to celebrate. She made her point without knocking Harrison Barnes because his stats in the league is a million times better than hers. She did not try to say the WNBA is just as good as the NBA, and she's not trying to compare salaries and act like the WNBA and the NBA make the same kind of money. Although, she said something that seems reasonable at face value, she says, the WNBA players should get paid the same amount of the shared revenue generated by their league as the NBA players are paid by their league. However, a deeper look into the business or economics of either of these leagues, we can conclude that it cannot be possible. First of all, like Plump said, it's on the Players Association to negotiate that revenue share. Secondly, there seemed to be a reason they cannot come to the same split as the NBA even when they tried back in 2020. A lot of people do not know that WNBA players are actually offered a 50-50 revenue split in their CBA, only if they bring in enough annual revenue to make that possible. Oddly, Plum completely left that part out. The reason that they can never get that 50-50 split promised by the CBA is because they need to make a certain amount of revenue annually to get it. Which is what the WNBA have failed to reach every year and because they generate far less than that threshold requires for 50 50 split, it makes it unattainable. Aside from the pro basketball player salaries, there is so much other stuff that need to be paid, the coaches, the GMs, janitors, the security guards, property taxes, electricity bills, the maintenance crew, team travel expense, advertising expense, the legal team, all sorts of things, which are obviously required for a sports league to operate. If the players of the WNBA take half of the league's revenue like they do in the NBA, the remaining 30 million of that initial 60 million they make every year does not leave enough money to afford all of the other expenses required to run the WNBA. According to a 2018 Sports Illustrated article regarding the so-called team and non-staff costs accounted for 15% of the expenses of small market NBA teams and 12% of large market teams. The remaining revenue is paid to the players, coaches, and everything else. Now, the WNBA teams cannot afford certain luxuries, such as first-class flights, expensive hotels, or top-notch personal chef meals, like the NBA can, but they still need the bare minimum things, like electricity, janitors, travel. The WNBA obviously tries to cut every last expense that they can, but even if they used 4% of the money the NBA does for this, such as team and non-staff costs, which would be ridiculously low and unrealistic, it would still account for 80% of the league's total revenue. This is why the NBA subsidizes the WNBA so that the lights will be on when the players play, and a clean basketball court, unless they want to play in an arena that they have to walk to, that has no light. It will be impossible to pay these players half of the league's revenue. This is why in 2025, when the WNBA requests for a higher share of the revenue, it will not happen. It will not be possible. Thank you for watching. Please remember to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and crush the notification bell. We will see you on the next one. Have a pleasant day.